Weston, coming to you from the beautiful north shore of Maui, windsurfing capital of the world. It was way back in 1967 that Hoyle Schweitzer mounted a sail to his old Belty surfboard and took off across LA Bay, setting people free to express themselves in the most natural way possible, with the wind, on the water. I'm here with my cameras to introduce you to some of sailing superstars, the wonderful people who make this sport what it is today, spectacular. Fasten your push straps. And hang on for the greatest adrenaline rush in life, windsurfing. The adrenaline rush you get from sailing is really sick. When it's good, it's just nothing can match it. Just ah. There's a lot of energy colors, the colors of the water, the colors of the sail. To me, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's very inspirational, the sport of windsurfing. That is to me. Everybody has their high, and windsurfing to me is my high. It gives me the feeling, the power, and the energy to relieve frustration and to be happy. That's the action for me. Cool. The first time I went windsurfing, I tell you, I was, I was more excited than, uh, than when a little boy sees the first time a girl naked. When I think about this sport and I think about the lifestyle it gives me, I think the two words that kind of sum it up for me are uninhibited freedom. It's complete ecstasy. It's an ego boost beyond belief. All the women who race windsurfing right now are very close. It's like it's like one little family. Like We travel, we work, we stay together most of the time. Your friends are the people you windsurf with. So it's really great. It like keeps everything together. I don't know, it makes you feel better about everything. And I don't know, it's windsurfing. You get such a feeling. Probably the way you could describe it would be like as you get to the top of a roller coaster and as you just drop straight down on the bottom, you're doing well, however fast you're going pretty quick, and your stomach just sort of goes out your mouth into your brain and uh, just an incredible feeling. So I'm trying to emphasize a lot and just really surfing the wave and riding it very vertical, going straight up, smacking it, coming back down, heading for the pocket, throwing the rig away, getting to grabbing the rig, put it back on. Keep riding, you know, just into surfing the wave a lot. 
My favorite maneuver is coming as close to the short break as I can. You are really lay, lay sail, lay down the sail. You are really hard carving one-handed duck dive with my red speedo. When I'm doing that, I'm sci fi through with the day. Well, I was going to my job with my car broke down. Couldn't find a phone just outside of town. But just within my reach was this beautiful beach. A board was on my car, I was headed for surfing. Well, I think about the times good and spare a dime. Couldn't raise the rent, never paid on time. I always found the money for the brand new sale. The water was my fortune, right in the rain. Yeah, I know it's kind of funny, but I love my board. Every time I hit the lip, she strikes a lovely chord. Like every pretty girl in this whole damn town always turns me up, turns me upside down. Hi, my name is Matt Schweitzer. I've been windsurfing since 1969. My father invented the sport and it's come a long ways. Boy, the old days were really fun. We used to go to lakes all the time and have two, three hundred people at a turnout. And it was a really social gathering. Uh, competition wasn't as fierce as it is now. It was um, really just a lot of friends getting together and having a great time, barbecuing and sailing. It was a good time. We kind of made freestyle just by playing around on the start line of races. We would just be screwing around while everybody was all serious. We'd you know, be doing all these things that nobody knew what we were doing, spinning around and doing pirouettes. And that's kind of how freestyle came to be. After a while, triangle racing became really monotonous. And with freestyle, you could really express yourself and, and uh, do what you wanted to do. Freestyle was, to us, the most important aspect of sailing back then. You know, we had slalom, long distance racing, uh, just regular triangle racing, and freestyle. And freestyle was what we all wanted to excel in. Hi, I'm Mike Waltz, and I've been windsurfing since 1969 when I was nine years old. Diane made Matt and I a special sail, number 12, that was made out of a Sabbat rig, and they cut it down and made really small booms and put us on an old uh, Hobie surfboard. And that was the rig that they called the kid, kid rig. And we got to learn how to sail on that, summer of 69. I remember when I first started, there was probably about 25 windsurfers in the world. And I could remember when we'd be on our way to one of the Sunday fun events where all the families got together. If you saw a windsurfer on the road or on the freeway, my parents would actually turn around, get on the off ramp, go the other way and chase the guy down just to find out who he was. It was such a small group of people that you wanted to like introduce yourself and say, hi, how you doing? You know, how long have you been doing this? Come follow us. We're going to this place. The first time I met Robbie Nash was in 1976 at the Berkeley Marina North American Championships in San Francisco. And um, he was this scrawny little 13 year old kid that uh, showed up and 
we had heard that he was, you know, a good sailor from Hawaii and didn't expect much until the first day we all went out sailing together. He went out, flipped the board up on the side and rode it that way. We're all, what in the heck is that? And he's all, oh, it's the rail ride. Hi, I'm Robbie Nash. I'm uh, 30 years old from Kailua, Hawaii, and I've been windsurfing since 1974. Started when I was 11 years old. Uh, my first windsurfing experience was actually tandem because I wasn't big enough at the time to pull the sail out of the water, so I'd sail inside of a friend, Mike Horgan, and he'd uh, let go of the booms and let me sail along until I'd fall down, and then he'd swim over and get us going again, and uh, slowly but surely I learned on my own. The first time you actually get up and go, and get from point A to point B and end up where you actually want it to be, uh, is amazing. It's a great feeling. I mean, for such a small accomplishment, after floundering and falling and getting up and falling, uh, it's really a great feeling. But what's neat is those feelings keep coming over and over and over again. Your first head dip and your first water start, and your first jive, and your first jump. And there are a lot of those little goals along the way that make the sport so much fun. But what I really enjoy most is jumping, I think. Any kind of jump, back loop, front loop, donkey kick, onshore wind, sideshore wind. Enough wind that I can jump. But there are days uh, with no jumps at all where the surfing, you know, down the line wave riding is as good as anything in life. And there are days uh, slalom sailing that with no waves at all are almost as much fun. So I mean, the sport's got a lot to offer. Every kid's uh, hero is Robbie Nash was mine also. And I remember seeing him in 1984. I went to World Cup in Silt with my parents. And uh, Robbie Nash walked towards me and smiled at me. That was like the most incredible thing. I mean, my legs got weak and I was all like, oh my God, you know, he smiled at me. <laughs> The male I respect most actually has to be Bjorn because he's by far the best sailor. He's like worked at it in such a way, like he wasn't so good at wave sailing before and wasn't so fluid, but he's worked at it in such a way that he can do the stuff and he's starting to get a bit of style. He trains so much and sails so much. I suppose he impresses me the most by far. Hello, I'm Bjorn Dunkerberg. I'm six times professional world champion of the PBA Tour. I've been racing on the Tour for eight years. I've been windsurfing for the past 16 since I was nine years old. I learned windsurfing in the Canary Islands where I live, still live with my parents. It's hard to say why I'm so fast. I think many reasons is because I'm big, I'm strong. I like going fast. I like really charging it to the maximum. The combination of the three, board sail and person on the board, and the attitude towards going fast is really important as well. My attitude towards windsurfing is very positive. I mean, windsurfing is my life. It's been like that since I was nine years old. I windsurf mostly every day. I spent most of my life on the beach, on the water. I enjoy it very much and I couldn't even imagine a life without windsurfing. Who did I look up to? I don't know, when I think about who I looked up to, it was definitely the cowboys. I always liked the cowboys in the pioneer days in the old west. After that, it was the Harley riders. I liked bikers. After bikers, it was the surfers. After the surfers, now it's the windsurfers. It's all relative. We all just want to live to be ride and ride to free. No, actually, that's wrong. Ride to live, live, ride to free, free, free to live, free to ride. Live to ride, ride to live. That's it. Live to ride, ride to live. It's the same motto even today. Check, check, check. One, two, check. <laughs> Check. Check. 
ultimate proving ground for the all-around sailor, competing in wave performance, slalom, course racing, and speed. 30 events, 13 countries, 250 competitors, and a whole lot of cash. Once in a while, this is actually Felipe, Spain. I got speed for it, right? So, W I P E O U T.
the PBE tour, not to be confused with Professional Bowlers Association of the PTA, it provides a wide variety of tactical skills and technical support. It's an ever-evolving science, so even beyond staff as for last year and keep up with this year's model, Mark keeps nearly 50 birds in his quiver, a huge advantage over his competitors. I just wouldn't recommend being a caddy to the airport. What do you get when you tear down the basketball hoops and build up some ramps for loops? 15,000 screaming maniacs in the coolest cooling clothes. comes to wave performance. Good equipment certainly helps, but the nut behind the wheel is by far the most important ingredient. New moves are developed with every passing year. Our old moves and getting more radical, especially deep in the Maui domain. But the act is absolutely insane. After a heavy session on the waves, there's one thing you can count on. 
definitely gonna be a better get up in the morning. I wouldn't be lying to you. You got you, got you, got you. Back in those days at Diamond Head, um, <laughs> it was kind of a, it was pretty wild times because things were changing so fast, equipment-wise, and and with that, you know, new maneuvers were were coming on, and you know, the it was pretty much an open slate. I mean, you could just you could write your own book, kind of a thing. You go out and you crash big, and you go, whoa, that was kind of a, you know, right before I crashed, I kind of did something. You know, so you retrace your, your steps and then you, you learn that maneuver over again, but the next time you, you try to make it. And um, it was just crazy. You know, it seemed like every month there was new equipment. The boards did this radical jump from like, you know, 10, 
ten and a half foot boards right down to seven foot wave boards, and we got on these uh, seven foot surfing style boards, and it just you know suddenly it was like surfing. You know, you could ride the wave like a like a surfboard, and the boards were super light, so the aerial maneuvers started getting really radical. It must have been like somewhere around eighty two or so that the um, the loop started coming in, and that was like you know who's going to be the first one to do the loop and. It was good times back then. I had a 12-foot rocket, and I just took a saw and cut like four feet off the nose on an angle and, and epoxied it, and I, just, and I just shortened my board by cutting it with a saw. <laughs> no, that was my first short board was a rocket that I had cut the nose off of. And um, it did make a little bit of a difference, that's for sure. A lot easier to carry to the beach anyway. Yes, 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 those were the days when sailors like Matt, Matt Ken Winter, Brian Smith, and a few lucky others experienced a time of rapid revolution in an era where cords, once longer than your car, were quickly wheeled down until they became shorter than your booms. Sails became wings, and skegs took on the shapes of everything. From shark fins to footballs. But what really made these good old days the good old days were the wide open waters, where the only things in your path were the dolphins and the seagulls. I first moved to Maui in 1978, where I worked as a windsurfing instructor on the west side of the island for one of the hotels. And I was completely broke, and I used to windsurf to work in the morning and hitchhike with my rig home in the afternoon. And after about six months of living over there and sailing on that side, I took my first trip to Hana and drove by Hokipa Beach Park and just freaked out. I couldn't believe all the waves and the wind, and the whole north side of the island was just filled with great windsurfing spots. And it was two days after that was the first time I ever sailed Hokipa, which was a pretty memorable day. I remember it just being fun. It was some of the bigger waves that I'd ever ridden um, with foot traps, because we did have foot traps that year. And it was a fun day. I remember that place that I was going to go back there for sure and try it again. Back to that place again. Tame the wild beast in his den. They crowned him the king of Hokipa. To the pocket, he drove it deeper. I gave Alex the Dominator. Alex won it for three years straighter. I hit the lip, he hit it later. Robbie Nixon took the crown. He turned the tables upside down. There was a move he could not master. He hit it straight for a sure disaster. He's still the king in every way. He rips it up to this very day. He won the one he eats for breakfast. Hot as it in all of Texas. Every kid takes a stab at the title. Dave Wetter put up a hell of a battle. There's no place quite like Okeepa. It wakes you up when you're a sleeper. Felony footage was presented by Rod Palmer of Lord Studio Productions. And George, he's from the Gorge. George, George, George. There's only one thing that George knows. It's in the woods where it blows. You get to wear a hat that glows. It's a circus. You're the show. Every chip. Bob and Harry can do a loop that's looking scary. But George's got a board that's cherry. Every movie busts his daring. Until he turns a shade of green, he'll be looking on that scene. He's gonna have that river green, where he can hang like Charlie Sheen. Likes to jump right over bondages. The more the wind, the more he charges. George will make a sailor's life as when he's done. It's in the garbage. His name is George. He's from the gorge. George. George. 
I sail the, the gorge every summer. I've been going up there for the last six years now. We started out there. My whole family went up there. My mom and dad took me and my brother up there, and we got into the competition scene, and that's where it all started. And we realized that we could actually do it, you know, competitively. It's a good place to relax. It's real beautiful and uh, warm, sunny, and fun. In the gorge, it's not like everyone's just out to do the most radical thing and like drive the weirdest cars and make the weirdest. I don't know, haircuts and I don't know what have you. It's like a whole different world over there. But it's cool, it's nice, you know, you just have to accept it. The gorge is mainland USA's hottest spot for windsurfing. But straight as lace corporate hoo ha transforms on holiday into a speed freaking, swell cracking river rat. They say drugs are addicting, sex is addicting, but this is the most addictive. People have lost their jobs getting this fix. Their wives, their houses, their cars, but never their windsurfing gear. The gorge isn't for everyone, but it seems like everybody goes to the gorge. On a good day, the wind funnels through these rocks at a speed that would send most people packing. You won't find many pro sailors here. Just a lot of regular guys ripping up the canyon walls like there's no tomorrow. You know, it's strange but true. Of all the strangers who go to the gorge, the most common name of all is George. Central California coast to the boss's beach, grooving out the Ian Bird and friends, rocking mama and the rampant raging models of her llama. <laughs> What windsurfing did for me is like my traveling related to windsurfing. When you go on a trip to India, you don't really know what to expect, you know. And then you find yourself windsurfing in front of the Taj Mahal. And there is really, there wasn't much action there. There was very light wind. But the dead people floating by and seeing that beautiful monument behind, it's like... It's a different rush, you know, jumping over sharks in Tahiti. Like everybody can do a jump jive, but to have sharks underneath you splitting in all directions, you know, it's a different rush. Windsurfer is the vehicle for the world to see different places, different cultures and different attitudes and try to incorporate them into my life. If it shall be negative, you try to learn from that. And if it's, it's positive, you adapt it to your lifestyle. So. It is all I'm about. Well, 
<laughs> Certain maneuvers that you try and do on the water, such as double loops or really big uh, 360 wave rides, you kind of have to shut your mind off and just think of the maneuver, see the wave, and attack the wave, and try not to think too much about it. Fear is the factor, but you have to try and overcome it. Um, you try and push yourself past it and just see what happens. Protest, what is that? Protest run? Or how do you call those, those things? <laughs> well, my my favorite maneuver is not the double. <laughs> but but I like... Doubles Doubles is just a necessary thing because it, the sport evolves into that direction. So we basically, we have no training in doing it. We have no trampoline training, no... Uh, dry training, etc., etc. So what we just do is we just go out and we try it, which is very risky. The thing is, everything goes so fast. You just kind of hope that you stay out of a position where your rig will stall on you, and you just try to just kind of twist through the wind and land on your back, and then uh, then that's it. You've done a double. So basically, it's not evolved to perfection yet, where we can actually use it in the contest and guaranteed land it. It's a very high risk maneuver. Triples, who knows? That's that's all up to up to the guy. You gotta be you gotta be pretty mental to, to try something like that. Yeah. I've been asked many times what uh, or how I would describe my style, and uh, the quickest, easiest way to describe it for myself is massive, rapid redirection. That's basically what I try and accomplish with every move I'm doing. I like my method rapid reproduction. I'd have to describe my sailing as pretty much just a monkey or a chimpanzee. You know, I'm just jumping around out there, scratching myself, and pretty much just laughing and having a good old time. I like the freedom that uh, being in the air gives me. And I guess when I watch a little a little squirrel jumping up there on like the telephone lines, jumping from tree to line to tree, I kind of think it's cool. You know, I, I just like that. I'd have to say I'd probably most be like uh, a big bull or something like that. In that uh, I'm not always the loosest guy on the water, but there's not many people out there that are going to charge too much harder than I will. So I liken that to a bull, you know, kind of snorting every now and then, ranting and raving, but uh, more or less a pretty mellow animal. A butterfly and a flying fish. Both of them fly and both of them carve. The flying fish carves to the water, butterfly flies. Flying fish can fly too, though. That's what I am, the mixture. But that is on the water. As I said earlier, there's a land, and I roam the land. So there's another animal for that. A cat, an acid. A well-experienced chameleon. Possibly. If I could compare my style to any animal, it would definitely be the dolphin. Smooth and stylish, just flowing, but radical, spontaneous, you know, definitely the dolphin, man, definitely. <laughs>
crucial. Um, some days you get on the wave and the timing is there. Everything flows together like, like a nice jazz band. Everything just boom, 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 boom. days I don't know what happens things just come together it's like doing a polka or something doesn't matter doesn't, doesn't matter what you do it's just nothing works I guess it all depends what side of the bed you wake up on in the morning
stuck under water for sometimes you know up to you know 10 15 maybe 20 seconds um 20 seconds doesn't sound very long if you hold your breath on the land if you climb into a washing machine you press start and hold your breath for 20 seconds it's quite a long time <laughs> We're using what we call now sandwich technology. Wanted to give you an example. We've got our styrofoam inside here, we've got our sheet foam on the bottom, and we've got sheet foam on the top, which isn't quite as thick. Carbon fiber on either side, I've sanded some of the paint away. We're never completely satisfied with our technology. We're always looking for something a little bit lighter, a little bit stronger, faster, and more competitive. This board would appear as any other board would at this stage, carbon fiber deck. But when I flip it over, you'll see it's not just any other board. We've made a hollow board here. We have no styrofoam core and instead we have a composite stringer. The advantage to a board like this is it's going to end up about 15% stiffer than a foam filled board and quite a bit lighter. On a nine foot board like this one we're talking probably two pounds which translates to acceleration and speed. For 20 or 24 hours worth of labor you end up with the finished racing board. Welcome to the 90s. In 1986 we began to develop a computer-aided design system which would allow us to take our ideas directly from the computer into a plotting machine. By 1989, we had accomplished this. Today, we operate our plotter cutter to an accuracy of a half a millimeter, and inside the computer, we're working to one-tenth of a millimeter. This has enabled us to create many new and different designs at a very high rate of speed and to build some of the fastest racing sales in the world, which are tested by people such as six-time world champion Norman Dutterbeck. Surfing, you've got Hawaii, California, you know, Florida, Japan, and Australia pretty much were the, the hot spots. But in windsurfing, pretty much every little um, duck pond across the U.S., across Europe, all the coastlines of the world, um, all this development was going on. So there was so much being put into it. And now we're finally able to put something back into surfing. Um, and it's not exactly something that was invented in windsurfing, but it was something that was really used widely in windsurfing was the, the foot straps. Suddenly we're able to put foot straps on our surfboards and, and it's like, it's like for me, the beginning days of windsurfing, you know, I lay in bed at night and I just think about all the new things that you can do and, and all the things that we're already doing in windsurfing that we can now do on surfboards, you know, loops and aerials and, and it's, uh, I mean, it's not, it doesn't make it just a little bit better. It's, it's like it just rewrites the whole book on surfing in my mind and in the mind of the guys that are doing it right now. It's, it's really progressive. Memorable big waves. I'd have to say my biggest wave was probably about 15 feet, just about. And that's probably out here at Hokeep, which is about, just about double that high. And I gotta say, going through my mind, I was scared. I was definitely scared. But you get an adrenaline rush and you get the thrill factor from it. And it's a lot of fun. You, you really try and push yourself, see what you can do and can't do. But there's a fine line. You don't want to push too hard because the waves are big and they are dangerous. You could get yourself in a lot of trouble. <laughs> It's 
natural thrust of energy that can heat you up. And I go into it. I don't know why. It's just something that pulls you there. You know what I'm saying? I, it would be hard for me to describe what life might potentially be like without windsurfing. But describing how it's influenced my life is impossible because I am a product of, of the sport. Well, as you know, I've been windsurfing for a very long time. My father is 50 years old and he still is a very good windsurfer. And I hope when I reach 50, I'll still enjoy as much as he does now. So windsurfing for me was my whole life. I've won 13 world titles and that's what I did for many years as a, as a profession. And now that I'm not a professional windsurfer, I, I think I enjoy it even more not having all the pressures. Um, I'll be doing it till I'm an old, old man. And I hope that my son will be windsurfing with me pretty soon out in the open channel. It's just great. It's just a, it's a feeling that you can't get from a lot of other sports. It's just, it's a thing of its own. I hope you've enjoyed our show. And you're thoroughly inspired to get out there in the water and ride the wind yourself. If you're ever having a tough time in life, just remember Bob Dylan's words. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs>